I just did a quick kind of check before I came, and I've, I've actually examined over 35 uh, PhDs and masters from around Australia and New Zealand, and I have taken about 35 candidates to com through completion. So it's, it's quite easy the way, that, quite nice the way that's kind of uh, balanced out. Um, okay, so this is real. <laughs> So what I'm going to, I'll just look at uh, the kind of the, I will call it just the nuts and bolts to, um, to start with, and then we'll look at, um, I've just done a thing of do's and don'ts about present, presenting for um, examination. Um, so in general, School of Art candidates are examined through an exhibition or a performance of work along with a dissertation. And I put it in that order uh, because the, we look at really kind of look at prioritizing the exhibition or the performance. In, in the past few years, other people have come on board in the School of Art, such as curators and uh, people from public art. And so maybe their work doesn't fit so neatly into a gallery situation or a theatre situation, um, but it can all be um, accommodated. Um, the, yeah, the, what happens is you dis, you're dis, everything has to be completed by a certain date, of course. Uh, the dissertation is submitted at least one month before your examination. So what we call the, the examination is when you present your work for exhibition uh, or to be seen by the examiners. So your examiners actually come to Melbourne, to examiners, uh, we invite them to your exhibition or your performance or whatever it is that you present at that time. Um, and you're, you're, as I say, your dissertation is submitted one, one month before that. So as you can see, it all has to be ready well in advance. And one month before the submission of the dissertation, your, your supervisors have to submit the examiners that are going to examine this project. Um, so again, we need to be pretty clear as, as supervisors that you're ready to be examined and uh, we can go ahead and, and uh, get these examiners on board. Um, I've said any space within reason can be used for the examination. Uh, so the, this, we've got the School of Art Gallery, and that's mainly used for um, exhibitions, but we can use any space so long as it's accessible um, without the general public there. So you can be, you can be examined in a, in a gallery, you know, a kind of a commercial gallery, an artist-run space, um, out in the street, um, anywhere. Uh, where, where the examiners can get to, where they can have kind of uh, a bit of quiet time away from the public gaze. Uh, it needs to be booked in advance. So, you know, when, when you're coming up to the end of your PhD or master's, um, you need to start, really start thinking ahead about six months before you're due to finish. You really need to start planning and planning to, you know, book the uh, School of Art Gallery, uh, you know, making sure everything, and, and kind of convincing your supervisors that all the work's there, that you're ready to go. Uh, normally we get the School of Art Gallery for a week, if, if that's the space you're using. Uh, you generally have about three days to set up. Your examiners come on two separate days, they come independently, separately. Um, and then on the last day you can open it up for your friends, family, whoever else wants to see it. Um, yeah, as I say, your examiners come uh, separately and they write an independent re report. So uh, in the old days we used to get everybody together at the same time, but now we make sure it's a really a quite a, uh, an independent um, viewing and they make their, own, uh, make their own mind up about what they see. Again, as Lorraine's pointed out, a lot of uh, universities do it quite differently. Um, some, some universities will get all the examiners together with a chair, some will get all the examiners together without a chair. Some, uh, some universities you actually meet the candidate really very informally, which I personally don't like at all. Um, and sometimes they'll do it in a more formal way as a, as a viva. Uh, but, uh, uh, and you, you do have the chance uh, to give a presentation if that's what you want, but none of our candidates to date have chosen to go down that path. So mainly it's this, you know, kind of a hands-off, put your work up for exhibition and, and submit your dissertation. So I've just gone through a few do's and don'ts. So I've said, do take control of your, ex of your uh, examination. You know, it really is yours. Um, you know, be really convincing. Be sure about what you want to do. Don't rely on other people to do it for you um, or determine what it is that you want to present. 
Uh, I think Lorreen hinted at this, make sure you're familiar with the um, guidelines to examiners. And I think if you remember, I gave you these on, at the very first session that we had. Um, I don't know how much notice you took then, but really everything is leading up to your examination. And your, your examiners get very particular guidelines. Those, they, get, they get instructions, and as Lorreen said, every university has different guidelines. So you need to be very familiar with the ones that go out to your examiners specifically, um, to know exactly what you're being examined on. Um, I said, make sure, this, these are in no particular order, make sure your examination uh, exhibition or performance aligns with your dissertation. So, you know, make sure that, that, that there's a correlation between the two. And I said, create clear criteria for examination. And this is all part, really, of taking control of your own examination. Because in the end, you create your own criteria. You're the one who determines your research question, your aims and objectives. So if, if you set those out, make sure that you follow those through and that your exhibition or your performance um, gives some insight into that. Um, so get your final draft of your dissertation copy edited. Um, that's really important. Uh, and the, the university has actually become a lot more um, strict about this in, in recent years. So, you know, really, and your supervisors too, uh, will not let your dissertation uh, be submitted if it's full of typos, grammatical uh, mistakes, and really bad English. Um, I said, do some trial installations of your work uh, before you, have, before you um, kind of install the work for your examination. And this is really important. Um, I think in recent times, I, I don't know what it's like in architecture and media and com, but we've had, I, I, know, I, know it's more, I think it's more in some of the examinations that I've done as, as an examiner. I've noticed that students now can go through from undergraduate, can do honours, and jump into a PhD and have never had a solo exhibition. You know, the most they've ever done is, is exhibit in the grad shows, uh, perhaps a little group show here and there. And suddenly they're faced at the end of this, you know, this PhD with presenting a solo exhibition of work. And, it's, and it can be quite obvious that, um, you know, they've really had no experience in that at all. So if you're one of those, I suggest that throughout your candidature, you make sure you, you set up your work with a particular focus and, and uh, you know, a, with a particular um, aim to show um, a, a particular part of the research. It's really, really important that you don't go into to, um, setting up your final exhibition without ever having practiced it. Um, do a little bit of research on potential examiners. Um, although you, you shouldn't know who your examiners are for in, in our school, uh, you do have the opportunity to say who you don't want. Uh, some of you who may have exhibited um, or have a little bit of a reputation might have had a run-in with certain people who may be, uh, your supervisors may be thinking of them as being your examiners. So you do have an opportunity to say who you don't you don't want because of any particular reason, but it's also possible to suggest potential examiners to your supervisors. And so, you know, again, it's part of taking control of your examination. Have a look around. They have to have a, they basically have to have a PhD, um, and you know, uh, or at least the equivalence at that level. So, but it's so it is possible for you to actually suggest um, examiners, but in the end, you won't know them. Um, and do present a resolved body of work. So it isn't to kind of put up everything you've ever done. And I have examined uh, PhDs where it's obviously someone's put up absolutely everything they've done. I've, gone, I've seen, you know, the most woeful exhibitions of work where you really, you know, it's just like a, I don't know, like a school project or something. Um, some of them aren't even in chronological order, and some of them I've, I've, I've even exa examined work that's come from 20 years ago. So, you know, it's like, oh, just throw in all my whole life's work. Um, so, you know, keep going back to your research question, your aims and objectives, and, and present it as a, a really, uh, you know, a tight, cohesive exhibition. Uh, show some confidence in what you do. Any, any, any of that will give the, the examiners confidence in you um, as, a, as a candidate. 
Um, I said, don't create new work for examination after you've submitted your dissertation. And this has happened, where suddenly panic sets in. You've su submitted your dissertation, and while well, you've got a month to go, um, I'll create some new work. Um, make sure everything that you uh, show, although you know it's difficult the way that we um, are examined here at RMIT, is that you can't include inst final installation um, shots or sounds in your dissertation because it, the exhibition comes after you've submitted the dissertation. But do make sure that everything that you present is accounted for in your dissertation. So don't make new work that isn't included in your dissertation. And again, as an examiner, I did, I did an examination um, late last year. And I was, you know, um, introduced to this, this uh, couple of videos. They, were, <laughs> they had no titles. Um, they weren't in the dissertation. And basically, I had, n I had no context. They're absolutely beautiful works, beautiful. And, and I, after having read the dissertation, I could see how that project may have been distilled into these videos. However, they were not in the dissertation and they had no titles. I, had, I didn't even know how to uh, reference them. Remember that the dissertation is what lasts. That's the, that's the lasting record of your research. That's the one that goes up into the research repository and will be accessible to anybody who puts in the right keywords anywhere in the world. Uh, your exhibition won't be. Okay? That's, um, that's a kind of a, a very ephemeral um, event. So, as I say, yeah, just don't create new work. Don't make extraordinary claims for your research unless you can substantiate it. So I did notice there was one of my students, I'll have to read it to you, um, who after, oh, where have I got it? Oh, it's not here, it's in the, it's in the notes at the bottom. Anyway, um, I noticed just as he was about to submit his dissertation that he kind of fiddled around with his uh, introduction and was making some claim that he wanted his art practice to be the equivalent to science or something. You know, it's like he was taking in the whole of science and he wanted his, his project to be equivalent to the whole of that. So, you know, really, that's, that's quite an extreme example. But don't make any claims for your project um, unless you can really show the evidence for it. Um, try not to illustrate theory. So, a lot, again, it's going back to the way, of, you know, that possible dry way of writing. Um, where some students think it's all to do with theory when, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about the way your practice drives the research. But, uh, but I have read it, not necessarily from this institution, but some, uh, as an examiner, I have read dissertations where the, the, the um, artwork looks like it's just been tacked on. It's, uh, and in fact, some universities do it in that way where the, the, you know, this kind of theoretical dissertation comes first and it's sort of illustrated by um, the students' artwork. So, yeah, just be careful that you're not illustrating theory. It's, it's all, you know, theory is obviously part of it, but it's, it's the theory that's, uh, that uh, the practice leads to, not the theory that you become interested in and then make pictures or performances about. Um, and don't treat your exhibition as if it was for a commercial gallery. So, you know, I have, I have again, it's, as an examiner, I've been to uh, presentations that actually have prices on the work. So remember, it is an examination. It's not, you know, it's not a selling exhibition. And I would just, and, uh, in light of what Laureen said about the, the text, um, I would just say don't be boring. You know, this really, this really should be quite exciting um, new discoveries for you, it should be new discoveries for your examiners, and there's, there's nothing better than reading a, you know, a really well-written um, text that, where the enthusiasm for that project is clearly coming through. So just, you know, just don't be boring, <laughs> it's a major advice I can give. Okay, 